Okay, so today basically I'm going to be doing um, a video. I'm starting a new project that, uh, of uh, a scarf on a table loom. I've never done uh, any projects on a table loom, basically. I've only ever done it on a floor loom. I've got a fanny, a 45-inch fanny, but that fanny has a sectional at the back, so I've always warped from back to front. Uh, and the warping on a warp board when you're using a sectional is slightly different than if you're obviously not using a sectional and you're actually going to... Um, be warping onto the beam instead okay so I figured since I'm starting the project let's show you how to do that also to remind myself later on because uh, I watch these videos uh, for myself in case I forget anything now the actual um, yarn that I'm using actually is quite thin I did try to do a video with this yarn and it's really hard to see on the warping board so I've taken one similar color uh, just to show you the technique that I will be using in order to be able to do it okay all right, so the first thing I would suggest basically is that you have a guide thread of some sort, okay? Um, the uh, scarf that I'm doing requires that it be uh, two and three quarter yards long. So you would measure that out. And again, I'm using like just a regular yarn. It is stretchy, okay? So you realize it is gonna stretch. You don't wanna pull it to its maximum when you're measuring it out, okay? But you also wanna allow for a little bit of extra at the end where you're gonna be tying it on to two different dowels, okay? This warp board that I've got right here basically is a homemade warp board, so it's not quite, it's not gonna look exactly the same as the one that you would purchase uh, from Leclerc or some other company as well, okay? So what I did is I took the, the amount, the two yards and three quarters, added a little bit of a, at the ends there for the slip knots, and then basically I just literally started to go back and forth and figure out what would give me the, the best combination of using the various dowels to give me as close to two yards and three quarters. So by doing a bunch of back and forth, I figured out that this combination right here would give me the best, uh, the best option, all right? You do want your uh, guide thread to be of a contrast color to whatever you're using. So I'm gonna be using basically a, a dark blue thread, okay, as a result of that. So the first thing you need to do is you need to do a slip knot, okay, so let me... Okay, so just to show you how to do a slip knot before you, for you to be able to put it onto the warping board, okay? So basically, I just generally put it around two fingers like this. I'm going to put the thread underneath. I usually try and push it up through with my finger. So you're making basically a little loop. I hold on to both of these, okay? And then it's obviously just going to make a, a slip knot. We know it's a slip knot because if you were to pull the thread, it should slip right out, okay? So again, just really quickly, putting it around your two fingers there, pushing a loop through, okay? And you've got your slip knot. Awesome. Now let's put it onto the warping board. Okay, okay so I put the, um, the uh, slip knot onto the first dowel. I wanna follow this guide thread all the way through. I am, because I need that actual cross, I'm gonna be doing the cross in between these two pegs. And uh, my husband basically made the stand for me so that when I'm doing the actual um, back and forth, it doesn't hurt my shoulder. But a lot of people will put these, like for example, on the wall for, uh, you know, in order to, at, you know, whatever height they need. Okay. You can also use, I have a Kalax and I've also used clamps to clamp it onto the Kalax, whatever the correct shelf happens to be. Okay. So basically I'm going to go over, I'm going to go under, follow my guide thread. All right. All the way down. I'm going to come back here. Now I do need to come back up. Okay. Now, even though this guide thread is the correct length for me, okay. At some point, both ends will obviously, um, they will need some, uh, because there'll, there'll be a loop here, it will need to be cut because these will be individual threads and that will come later on in the process. But basically until, until then I will, you know, keep it the way it is. All right. So, all right, I'm going to do that. Come back around. I'm going to come back up, but I got to finish my cross this time. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to come above. Okay. And then I'm going to come under and you can see that it's making a cross right here. Okay. And then I'm going to come back, whoops, come back around. I'm going to go on top of these two. I'm going to go under this one to make that cross. I'm going to go back, around, all the way down, coming around. I'm going to go back around the way I came. I'm going to go back up. All right. And then I'm going to cross again. Okay. And keep doing this. Now, basically, as you go through, this is going to pull out, so you're going to want to push them in. Okay. And that's not helpful. My guide thread just came off. All right. There we go. Okay. Now I need to have a total of, uh, 209, um, ends 
in order to be able to warp. And so I don't want to do 209 in one shot. To me, it's going to be very unwieldy. So I'm going to make little amounts with little chains and then bring them over to the actual loom and then uh, slay the reed little by little. Okay, you could potentially do all of them in one shot. Again, that's up to you to decide that. Um, so basically, because I need 209, I'm going to do batches of 50. So three batches of 50 will make 150, and then the final batch will have 59 to make that 209, okay? So let me finish these, this 10 here, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go across, under, this way here, underneath, this way, okay? So let me count how many I've got so far. All right, so I've got two, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I need to do one more round of up and down. Okay. All right. Okay, so I'm just gonna twist it onto here. Okay. Do my recount just to make very sure. Two, four, six, eight, ten. So what I'm gonna do basically is I take a piece of yarn. I cut a bunch of small pieces of yarn to do my tie-ups onto the actual warp. I'm going to tie this bunch here of 10 together. I am not obviously going to include the guide thread because I'm not going to take that uh, to the loom later on. Okay. I'm going to be adding though because I need 50. So I'm, the next 10 will be beside and so forth and I'll show you how to tie that one on so that I don't have to keep going back and actually uh, checking, you know, do I have 50 at this point. Okay. So let me do the next set of 10. Now typically I use, um, I will use a coffee can to keep my yarn in so it doesn't roll all over the floor. Now, okay, so you've noticed here, this one came with a knot and sometimes at some point when you actually use yarn, there, it's gonna be an end uh, to continue on. I don't want this knot in the middle of my weaving. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back it up to this original dowel right here. Okay. So let's take this. Okay. Just give me one second. Grab my scissors. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do basically is I'm going to cut, all right, I'm going to cut it by basically about, I guess I got about here. Okay. Let that hang for a sec. All right. I'm going to go back to where this knot is. I'm going to cut it out. All right. So I don't want that in my weaving. If that knot had been near the, 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 you know, the two ends, I wouldn't worry so much about that because when I'm actually uh, putting it onto the loom, it's part of the waist. And so it's not going to be part of my weaving anyways, but because this one would have been in the middle, it's a problem. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two. All right. I'm going to make, put them together. I'm going to do a knot. Okay. All right, ah. okay, so now my knot is here, all right? So then I'm gonna go, oh, hold on, sorry. Because I was coming back, it has to be under, okay? Then I go back, underneath, okay, to finish our cross. My knot ends up on the end, great, okay? All right, okay, okay, let's count to see, because now I've completely lost count, okay? Right, and then we've got oh, all right. So let me count to make sure. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So if I wanted to, I would continue on, okay, take the same threads that I had at the beginning here, okay, and I'm gonna now do another knot, just a single knot, because you're gonna be undoing these, okay, and you're gonna be doing it again. And so it shows very clearly, okay, when you actually look at it. All right, you could tell that I've got one batch of 10, another batch of 10. Obviously, I want 50, so I'm going to look for five of these in the end, okay? Um, basically, what it, you, you would just keep going, okay? And then uh, I'm going to show you what the tie-up is uh, at the end there, a little bit closer up, so you can actually see how everything is tied up nicely, okay? So what I want here, let's pretend I had done my 50, okay? You want to be able to take this thing off the loom. So you want to make sure that you're able to maintain this cross that you've made, obviously not including your guide thread. So I want to be able to put this through the cross, okay? So I've got here, I'm going to put it through here, all right? You're going to have obviously the bottom part, all right? 
And then I want to do the same thing on to the other side. Okay, so I'm going to pull that. And I'm not including, okay, I'm not including the guide thread. Okay, so I've got all the threads involved here. I'm just going to do a quick knot at the end. Okay, because all we want is for this basically to stay together. Okay, so let's do that. All right, and we're going to come back to this afterwards. Now, I have to be able to take this off the loom. I don't want everything to fall apart. So I'm going to add in a few more tie-ins. Okay, I'm going to, all right, I'm going to add one for the threads on top on this side. Okay, and again, I will be taking all of these out. So you don't want to make them super tight or impossible to undo. Okay. And then I'm going to do on this side the exact same thing as well. Okay. So I'm going to do the one on top here. And so basically I'm going to do the last one, which is down here. Now depending on how long your warp is, mine isn't very long. Okay. It's not really going to require, uh, require me uh, to do a whole bunch. So I've got another, I've got my other tie up here and basically it's not a lot to get tangled up, but if you have a really long one going back and forth, back and forth, what I typically do is I tend to do one like tie up per row. Okay. So it gives me approximately, you know, about a yard between them. Uh, so that, you know, it doesn't get, you don't have over uh, a huge amount of knots, but it's not getting overly tangled either. Okay. The other thing that you want to do is basically you're going to be taking, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this. Okay, now that everything's tied off. All right, and then basically we're gonna end up taking, what we're gonna do is we're gonna end up taking this, this chain off and actually um, making a chain out of it to carry. You don't have to, this is so short, I don't necessarily need to do that. But again, if you have a longer warp, it becomes a lot easier because that chain will actually shorten the amount that you're carrying along, okay?